In general, for thyroid surgery, we publish, similar to others, that nationwide, uh, high volume surgeons perform, when they perform this operation, the risk of complications is significantly lower in the hands of high volume surgeon compared to low volume surgeon. Uh, so what's really interesting here that over 95% of thyroid surgery performed in this country are performed by uh, um, an occasional thyroid surgeon, and which basically means performing less than five a year. So 95% of the thyroid surgeries are performed by occasional thyroid surgeries who perform less than five a year. So when you look at the data nationwide, there's different databases that you can uh, look at this and the data has been documented and published. Uh, that high volume surgeon, when they perform these operations, significant risk of, uh, risk of complications, shorter hospitalization, and uh, significantly lower costs. Uh, so uh, not just patient care, but also a significant lower cost for the healthcare system. So for the robotic approaches, though, also uh, there is always a learning curve. And what we published on, uh, similar to what other published, usually needs somewhere between 25 to 45 cases to master this operation and avoid complications related to the early experience. So we perform approximately like 100 a year, and we've been doing this for over five years. But again, the new thing that we've been performing is the modified radical neck dissection, the extensive neck dissection, uh, and no one in the United States performed that. It's been done in a center in Europe and in Asia, but we master the technique first in order to advance to the neck dissection. And um, the, the, the neck lift surgery with the retroauricular approach with the same incision that we use for facelift to perform the thyroid surgery. The problem with this is that most surgeons who perform the operation are low volume surgeons. So that's a big problem. And number two, it's a very involving procedure. You have to have really an interest in this and you have to be comfortable not just by the thyroid, in thyroid surgery, but also comfortable with the robotic approaches. So we've been doing robotic surgery before starting robotic thyroid surgery. Like in my case, I'm an endocrine surgeon, so we used to use it for adrenal surgery, for example, or other GI surgery. So uh, when we start doing the thyroid, we're comfortable with the robot and we were comfortable with the thyroid, so it was just a good mix. So you have to have, this should be only done in high volume centers and centers with good expertise. Uh, <coughs> and in the United States, we always want to test things, make sure it's all good before we start doing them. Um, but um, it's an involving technique that uh, re required the expertise with just not thyroid surgery, but also with robotic expertise. Uh, so if you have an older surgeon who is ex very experienced in thyroid surgery, they might not feel comfortable with the robot. And if you have a younger surgeon who is comfortable with the new technology and the robot, they did not do enough thyroid surgery, and you just need to have this combination of both. Patients find us uh, through the internet uh, and they come for this and uh, you know it's, it's very fascinating when you look at uh, uh, the patients who are actually undergoing this procedure at Tulane, most of them are out of town patients. The procedure cannot be performed for all patients, for all thyroid surgery. We do a lot of traditional conventional surgery with the open conventional approach. Um, so for example, you cannot offer this for a, a super obese patient. Uh, uh, you cannot offer it for a very advanced cancer or substance of goiter. Uh, I, I live here in New Orleans, and New Orleans is the center of uh, the world for best restaurant, best food. We are number one in the country in obesity. So uh, um, not many patients that we see here from uh, New Orleans and Louisiana are really thin. So uh, not everybody is a candidate for this approach. Uh, so. Uh, Patients somehow find about this. I think the thyroid is uh, is very well established, and patients understand where are the centers that can perform these operations. Yes, we'll have patients that uh, feel like they uh, prefer to go with the conventional surgery and uh, I've tried to avoid. Uh, people are always afraid from possible innovations and stuff like this, and there are always. P uh, 
surgeons who will f uh, try to, you know, say that this approach is not a good approach just because they are not able to offer this approach and uh, always question the safety of this approach. Um, and it's absolutely as any other operation, as any other procedure, as any other uh, novel uh, technology, if uh, the person who is performing it is not an experience in it, the risk of complication will be significantly higher. I don't try to do anything to convince the patient. The patient has to be eager to have the procedure and uh, very um, excited about it, very motivated. If the patient, if I feel that the patient uh, is not very excited about it, we are not offering this approach. We're just doing the traditional conventional surgery. It takes longer to perform this operation. So it takes a, an average approximately two hours to perform the surgery for a simple thyroid surgery versus an hour, hour and a half. So it's a, a little long and if you do a neck dissection, it also takes a little longer. Uh, so unless the patient is motivated and willing to, to excited about avoiding the next scar, you know, we have patients that um, have history of keloids and stuff like this. And a, and a very aggressive scar across the neck can be a very uh, disappointing and can be very disfiguring. So they can be very motivated about uh, these approaches. Uh, I have patients that come for this approach because they have cancer, they have plans for wedding. It will take a few years to have a, a neck incision to be non-visible um, most of the time. So uh, if we can avoid this completely by having the head incision, patients can be very excited about it. We published uh, many publications on the safety of this approach and we performed like others meta-analysis of the published data comparing robotic to conventional surgery and we showed that this approach is safe and feasible uh, you just need to have it done by the high volume surgeon in the right center for the right group of patients so it's a select group of patients who are really a good candidate for this approach so you have to have uh, the right surgeon right center and the right patient well, there is always evolution in surgery robotic surgery has been around for 20 years for thyroids it just started uh, six seven years ago and it took a while to actually come to united states and uh, uh, still, people have concerns all the time about new technology, uh, uh, and I think there is still will be more improvement in the field uh, to perform this operation with maybe a telesurgery. Some surgeon can perform this operation in New York for a patient in France. So it's been done before, but it could be really the future. Uh, offering operations for patient overseas and stuff like this. There is more needs to be done. Um, uh, there are new robotic systems that are out there specialized, for example, for head and neck surgery. So there is more needs to be done in the field, but it's not going away. It's just going to hopefully improve and get better and better.